Okay. Whenever you ready. Remember Tapelo make it make my voice deeper, né? It's been asking you to make his voice this is the fun time. You can only make your voice deeper in edit. <laughs> yeah, when it's done, you will make it deeper. He's giving a note so that he never forget. Tell a clown him. Also, I'm not gonna put this. Anyway, so Lyric, you yeah. Remember the episode that we that we had about uh, finding your god. Mm. Right, yeah. I'm 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 really curious to know uh why do you think because if I understand it correctly, you are sort of like saying that we should look beyond the teacher mm-hmm. um and not get caught up in the examples or you know the messenger but really focus on the source. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Um so why should we go to a teacher at all? I mean, why not just go straight to God or to the God that you believe is yours, uh, etc. Yeah. Why do you go to school? <laughs> Maybe that's the question like why do you go to school? Um I think yeah, it depends, but I think everybody's different, you know? Like you go to a teacher because you want an expansion on the curriculum. You know, you want someone that's going to break it down for you because theology to a great extent is a discipline of study. So the things context that you might not get, so you, that's what you you're trying to get a deeper understanding on a context level like what does the script mean? Um mm. that that's one way of of looking at it. Another way of looking Another reason might be some people go to church for fellowship like the prison worship you know I know that's where I'm at <laughs> I know that's where I'm at um for yeah. that moment of community. being yeah of community and convening you know in that moment you know for me even that moment of prison worship is more like a ritual yeah. you know ritual is you do something for a reason but the effect of the ritual is mm. is different for every person yeah. Yeah. so we will sing the same song because we're in that ritual space yeah. but what that song does to us and yeah. for us is different mm. right so you yeah. get something some people like get overly emotional some people don't even move some are singing the lyrics some are humming but they're all finding this frequency within them Mm-hmm. Right. Um and then some it's vibes. You're just going because you've always gone, right? Yeah. Some you go cuz you saw It's so, also a ritual. I go every Sunday so I'm going to go every Sunday. Exactly. It's a, I'm just it's a routine. At that point it's a routine. It's yes. not even a ritual cuz you're not routine. even clocked in. Yeah. For a ritual to be effective, you have to be clocked in. Yes. You have to understand what's happening. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's just routine. Mm-hmm. You, you are going cuz you are going. If you're just going. If you're just going. No, it's about you. Nah. At that point, it's about you. Um, it's the same thing. I think I, I said it's important when you start finding God for yourself to be able to discern between His voice and your voice. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes you are talking to yourself, yes. and then you think you're still within. Yeah. And then you're like, no, but that was you. That was not. Mm. <laughs> that was never. Um, yeah. It's the same way as being able to discern between adrenaline and anointing. You can start within anointing, but when it starts being you performing yeah. then you've moved over you mm. have crossed over into adrenaline because you still had the gift you still had the gift but now you are moving in a frequency that's just your power mm. okay okay but here's the thing though if i'm finding my god that's yeah. that's the, that's the mission that i'm on um why is it then that i can trust the teacher to be to have been blessed with more understanding of the scripture than i or is it a thing of is it because the teacher has spent more time than i have mm. and now that that begs the question um is it okay for me to spend how much time should i be spending trying to find god should i be dedicating my life to it or should i I would say your lifetime. Literally that was going to be my answer. I was going to be like you dedicate your whole lifetime. The thing is the teacher is an aid, right? They are there because 
they spend time in the they probably spend more time than you yes. which is why you think they've got a higher anointing than you yes. it might be true might not be true but because they spend time they open themselves up to get revelation mm. right because there's Deliberate. word yes yeah. word is static mm. right it's written in black and white mm. it's static but it starts to have meaning when you get revelation and that comes through time Spend comes alive. Yes, the word comes alive when you spend time and connect. Intentionally. Intentionally. Yeah, intentionally. You know? mm. Intentionally. Yeah? Can we go on to today's part okay. <laughs> while we are here? <laughs> because it's going to get from that, right? I thought, okay, since we spoke about that topic of finding God and it was it was an intro level, like let's let's find. So I thought you know what, let's have this session where we just talk about something more, but also referring to that. You'll see what I mean. So, Hi and welcome to Soulful Restoration with me, Lyric the Curator. We are back with another episode of this interesting school, <laughs> interesting platform of growth. Um, I see your DMs, I see your likes, I see your shares. Um, some of you actually know me like real time and you'll ask me stuff and we are debriefing on everything that we discuss on this platform. But what's most important and what's most fulfilling for me is that each of us are growing deeper into our understanding of being beings, of being human beings, of being spiritual beings, and we're tying the links. Okay, so today I am going to be having a bit of a different approach to this episode. I've prepared something for us, and it's feeding off the an episode called Finding Your God. Um, in terms of the flow of things. So we're still in the spiritual space for this episode. Stick around if you're not, you know, that spiritually inclined or whatever your belief is, because I'm talking about the burden of memory. That's what we're talking about. But we're going to use a scripture as the launching pad because the stories in scripture or even fables are universal. So you know the story. I don't need to give you context. I can just read it to you and you'll understand where we're coming from. Also, my team is in the room. You won't see them if you're watching, but you will hear them. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you will hear them. Um, and we're just going to pose questions and talk about this topic because I think it needs more than one perspective. And there might be things that I didn't even think about that we can debrief, unpack, repack, repackage, and hopefully help you in the process. So, burden of memory. It's coming from a scripture, the story, actually. It's the story of Paul. It is Paul. Or is it Peter? Ah, it's Peter. <laughs> Who walked on what? <laughs> it's Pete. Peter. 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 There we go. It's that story of Peter walking on water, and I think it's one of an important one. So I'm going to just read out real quick, quick. It's uh, Matthew 14, um, verse 25 to, let's see. I'll tell you where it ends. Let's start at 25. Because <laughs> it keeps going. I know where I need to stop. That's all that's important, guys. So it says, Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and ran out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, 
you are the son of God. So it ends at verse 33. So it's verse 25 to verse 33. That's the story that we are going to unpack Use under the theme, the burden of memory. So as we live and transform and we learn new things um, and we start being like different, awakened, awakened, awoke, um, but just generally being good human beings, like decent, purpose-driven human beings, we start to struggle with certain things. Um, we struggle with backlash, with people's opinion. We struggle with the noises in our heads. You know those voices that keep telling you you can't or you're not good enough or who are you to even try? And those come from past experiences that you've either lived through or that you've inherited in your DNA. And that's memory. But also memory can be a good thing, right? <laughs> that's how you know how to get home. So it's not all bad. Nothing is all bad. Yin and yang. Yeah. Like there's a good and a bad side, but you need to manage the bad side so it never overpowers your good side. Because when it does, you stop being proactive or productive, right? And that's what I want to just pause and reflect on, where guarding your thoughts is just as important as guarding your heart. Because the thought that lasts in your head, the last thought that you just nurture in your head that's the story you'll become. That's the narrative you're going to believe in. So we're going to look at three ways, three points or three structures. We're going to look at the burden of memory when it's coming from you, when it's coming from others, and when it's coming through lineage or tradition, right? And that's why I chose the story. So Peter, first of all, <laughs> I was trying to be a new reformed person who was like, you know what, this is my life, I'm renewed, I'm reformed. Which shouldn't be weird. Like when you reform as a person, when you evolve, it shouldn't be weird. Because even your skin sheds, right? All the cells in your body, I think it's like a four-year cycle when you're an adult, become renewed. So literally after like four years or so, you are literally a new person. Every cell in your body is new. But why is it weird when it's your brain that's transforming? And it actually can transform it over a shorter period of time because the transformation of your mind is not dependent on time like that of your cells in your body, but it's dependent on intent, on will, on what you want to become, on what you choose to do. So from the beginning, it says, shortly before dawn. I'm not even going to bother that verse 25, that before dawn, because we'll be here for a very long time. I want to say... The disciples saw Jesus walking on water, but only one wanted to walk on the water with him. And that's what happens with you, right? You'll be in a crew or a group of friends or family, and you are all the same. You're uniform. And then one day something clicks and you decide, I can no longer live in the fold of this conformity. It's no longer me. I need to be greater. I need to walk in my purpose. I need to be someone that counts. And as soon as you do that, everybody looks at you like, how dare you? You used to be this type of person. You used to be that type of person. Um, there are stories, there was a film, but it's actually based on a real life story where someone was imprisoned for a crime. I think it was theft. And then they came out a couple of years later, came out of prison. And now they reformed. They want to do things the right way, you know, toe the line. But the people in his community don't give him the time of day. Um, his former crew members on whatever the number of that gang was are like, there's no way you're better than us. <laughs> this thing of you trying to be all cleaned up, businessmen, legal is not going to last. You're going to come back and join the criminal world like you used to because that's who you are. They constantly affirm the negativity that he's trying to run away from. People do that. As soon as you want to step away and do better, they remind you of everything you've done prior. Like, oh, you think you're better now, but you used to do A, B, C, and D. But that is not on you. That talking, all of it, comes from that part where it says, Peter saw the wind. No one can see wind, yo. He saw the wind. Where? Where have you seen wind? You can't see wind. You can see the effects of wind. 
but he paid attention. He saw when, which basically for me says, that's when you look at everybody's opinion about you and not focus on your goal. You are on the straight and narrow. You are walking towards your destination. You are living in your purpose. And then people start talking, right? They say dogs don't bark at stationary cars. You have to start moving. Then they start barking. They become the wind. And then all of a sudden, you look back. You look back into time and say, and as soon as you look back, that's when you start to drown, and you'll find that they're actually envious of you because you are walking on what many people drown in. And it's a matter of their insecurity that they are now making yours. And yours is just to keep your eye on the price. They can talk. They can do whatever they want behind your back. Don't look. You can't see wind. Let it do what it does. Focus on the prize. That's you. Let go of what everybody else that tells you you are. Start defining yourself. Let their memory be on them. Forgive them and let it go. Forgive them. Let's pause there for a second. Forgiveness is one of those things we talk about, really practice, and also mm-hmm. sometimes don't even understand what, what, what is forgiveness, right? Some people be like, I'll forgive you if you say you're sorry. Okay. And then others are like, no, you have to explain yourself first and then I'll forgive you. And then others are like, I'll forgive you when I feel like it. <laughs> like, and others are like, I will never forgive you straight up. But forgiveness at its core is an act of will. It's not an act of emotion. You don't feel like, oh, it's like, oh, there's that forgiveness coming up. I feel it. It's an act of will because forgiveness is simply letting go. It's not that you forget what was done to you. You're choosing to not let it affect who you are. You're choosing to let it go and move on. You literally just like drop it like a hot potato, like whoop, there we go, and keep it moving. And you can tell that someone, forgiveness is a will thing. It's about you. Because someone can apologize and you will still be mad. You will still be angry. You'll still be like... And they're like, but I said, I'm sorry. You know, but you don't understand. And you will go on. Like, you will literally take out the fire. Like, Dish. let me tell you what you did on this February. What? Are you kidding me? We're in 2024. You're telling me about what I did in 1992. That's how you know that forgiveness is never really subject to the other person. It's subject to you. You have to decide that I'm letting that thing go. And sometimes you will be triggered. Like, they'll do something and be like, remember that day? then you let it go again. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness is a continuous process. It's not always that you're going to let it go today and stand. I mean, there are certain things that you can forgive like that. Like if someone steps on you, okay, cool, sorry, it's chill, we move. But the things that really cut you deep, so deep that it takes time for the wound to heal, years even. And as that wound is healing, when someone touches it or even gets close, sometimes we get triggered by proximity. Yeah. They haven't touched you. They just got close. And you're like, hey, that wound. Then you have to forgive again. So forgiveness can be a continuous process, and it often is. You literally can forgive the same thing a hundred times. Because every time, it's just like, ah, let it go. So forgiveness is an act of will. And closure is a decision. It's not an event. Nothing has to happen for you to get closure with things. You have to decide, I'm closing this book, it is what it is. If one day I get answers to why that event happened or why that person did me bad or why that had to happen to me, okay, cool. But you're not going to stand still while life moves on and wait for that one answer to fall into your lap. Closure is literally you saying, from this day on, I decide that X, Y, and Z will no longer be a factor in my life. Case closed, let's move on. And I think many of us hold on to that closure clause. I'm waiting for closure. Like, I'm, if this happens, then I'll get closure. Or what happens in the interim? You just keep thinking about, I'm waiting for this one to say sorry. I'm waiting for that to happen. I'm waiting for a reason. And if they never have come to you, what then? So I'll repeat, closure is a decision. It's not an event. And then... There's the voice in your head. So I think at this point, we've spoken about the burden of memory from 
other people's perspective, like what people put onto you. And then now we're starting to move over to the burden of memory in you. One, when you start remembering the things you used to do or the things that were done to you, and you start going into that rabbit hole, into that rut, right? Because that's the thing, you know, sometimes you'll be going on about your life, on about your business, life is good, and then you think about one random event, like that one random thought comes into your mind, and before you know it, you're thinking about what that one did, and then that one did that, and then that led to this, and you are like, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, it just keeps going, you're going into the darkness, you find yourself at the bottom of the pit, and you're like, wait, it took one thought, and you just rolled into the darkness, and that's what I meant at the beginning when I said, Guarding your thoughts is as important as guarding your heart because you can think yourself sick. You can think yourself into a very dark place where you are ready to do questionable things because of things that were done to you. But in that moment when those thoughts come, you need to let them go. You need to be like, mm, that was then, this is now. Oh, Shirley Caesar says, that was then, this is now. I'm starting all over again. Starting all Make it a habit to start all over again. And I don't mean like ground zero with everything, like go sell everything you own and start it. No, just like internally. Sometimes you need to constantly just scrape off and be like, I'm starting all over again. That thought was then. That's no longer who I am. This is now. I'm starting all over again. Forgive yourself as much as you forgive others. That's on period. <laughs> no, I think we struggle a lot with forgiving ourselves because now you're like, I should have done this. I should have done that. Um, I should have been better. Yeah, if you knew better, you would have. The reason you're even able to think today that I should have done better then is probably because you've grown between then and now. Now you also have the benefit of hindsight. We are like, actually, I could have. But at that point, you didn't have any of what you have now. So therefore, forgive yourself. Let that go. There's no need to hold on to it. Yeah? We good? Questions? <laughs> comments? Move on to the third point. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Jesus said, remember Peter asked, Jesus, if my brother sins against me, mm. how many times must forgive? I forgive him? Like seven? <laughs> There's a limit. There must be a limit there. <laughs> yeah, you're like, and then I think it's like seven, and it's like 70 times seven. seven. I'm sure you're like, seven. <laughs> <laughs> like, how many times? Because it's continuous. Like, every day, every day someone's going to find a new way to offend you. But here's my thing. Mm -hmm. in, in that scripture, and Peter was talking about my brother, or maybe one specific person. Mm -hmm. How often should I forgive this person? Uh -huh. So then, when, you, when it comes to forgiveness, is it really forgiveness if you say, I forgive you, but I'm never going to talk to you again. Get out of my life. Mm. So now, but in the context of the scripture, it's like you still allow this person to be in your life mm. and still give them the opportunity to mm. hurt you 70 times, seven times. Mm, I hear you. Forgiveness does not mean reconciliation directly. That's different. Like, okay. I can forgive you and let what you did go, but I can never trust you again. Because I've seen what you do in that type of situation. So you've shown me your color. We're good. Like, if I see you on the road, uh, moja, we will greet, um, nan, we will live yeah. a good life. Yeah. But I can never trust you in that element of my life again because I've seen how you are. I've seen your colors. So what do you suggest? Yes, what do you do? Because a lot of, not a lot of people have that yeah. mindset of a... Reconcile. If you don't reconcile with me, there's still something. Yeah, Please it means forgive we, me. like we must come back into relationships. Yes. Like. How do you how do you manage that expectation and communicate it as effectively as possible to people? Because not a lot of people have that mindset, and, and not a lot. <laughs> not in my life, ninety percent of people. <laughs> If I'm being honest, <laughs> like, please respect that. I don't, there's no animosity. We're not fighting, but it's just not happening. You're not going to be in Like, it's just, it's, I'm sorry. It's not Jesus happening. Jesus doesn't think so. Yeah, are you Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, we can't say, Vele Vele 70 times 7 to the power of 7. King out guys. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a lot. Like, I it's a lot. So I can forgive you. Here's the thing. Who's that homie? Ah, there was a homie in the Bible. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there was a homie, but 
I forgot. But basically, he was saying they needed to go to somewhere like this evangelism situation. And he's like, to this one, let's go. And the other one was like, okay, if I'm coming, then I'm bringing my friend. But the main character and that other friend are not on good terms. So he was like, actually, you both can stay. Mm. But if you read back, that guy had done something in the past. Yeah. I forgave you. I've let that go. But I'm not trusting you with the future of me. Like, we can eat together. Right? Yeah. But we cannot journey and do life together. Mm. I think that's a thing that... It's not animosity. Like, I'm not mad. I'm not, I'm not holding a grudge. It's simply a boundary that I'm putting up to actually protect both you and I. I'm protecting myself because I know what you can do. You don't bring a, a snake into your house. That's just, we're not beefing. Like, snake, go wild outside. Do what you got to do. Yeah. But into my space, yeah. you can't be because I've seen, right? Yeah. Um, it's also the same, like, I think with, you know, people use the term friend lightly. Very like, light. Like, you meet Very today. Easy. We are friends. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm, we are not. <laughs> Yeah. We are acquaintances, right? Yeah. Yeah. We share a work desk. Every day we go to work. You sit on this side, I sit on that side. We're not friends. We talk a lot, yes, but we're not friends. So I think also the expectations that come when people don't know that yeah. it's game over. It's because already from the onset, you were not clear on what are we? Where mm -hmm. are we? And when we are no longer that, and I tell you that we are no longer that because of whatever has transpired, then you keep coming. Then it's your responsibility to continue to remind of them of the boundary. Because people will, will struggle with you. They will try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So by virtue of someone... So like, let's say I take your advice. Yeah, yeah. And I now establish boundaries without any animosity. Yeah, yeah. That basically means that that person doesn't have the... the, 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 the freedom to hurt me anymore. The access, yeah. Therefore... Mm -hmm there will be no more forgiveness needed from this point forward. Oh, no, they can definitely still hurt you. <laughs> Just not at that same place. You know when they say, fool me once, shame on you. you. Fool me twice, shame on me for being the same fool. <laughs> um, J. Cole says, fool me three times. <laughs> Why does he go three times? <laughs> Screw the peace sign. <laughs> Give me my gun. <laughs> okay, forgiveness. Let's remember forgiveness. <laughs> Guns forgiveness not the same. <laughs> but in that constant, literally, it's that. It's, we're good. Like, we really are good. I forget, I've let mm. that thing go. But I'm not going to give you the opportunity to do it again. Yeah. That's simply it. Like, some okay. things are forgivable and we can continue. Like, yeah. we can still be at that level of access and relationship. Mm. But there are certain things that you can't do to me and we still stay at the same level of relationship. They're unreconcilable in, in, in my space, in my book of values. I've seen Gutala. Yeah. One mistake is doy. <laughs> mm. I do when I'm out. Therefore, we're good. Like, I respect you as a person. We can talk. We can go for lunch. Yeah. Maybe if you pay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we cannot do life at that level together. You can't have that much access to me. Because the reality is, the closer a person is to you, the deeper they can hurt you. Mm. Is it even genuine at that point? What? We are doing lunch together, but we're not even, I'm not even sharing any... Yeah, let's say Zooks, we were in business into. together. Let's say we're in business together. Yeah. And then you robbed me blind. Of my mind. Yeah. Yes. Gonna and to me, because this is also a personal thing, and to me, that is like, okay, I forgive you for taking my money, sure. but I'll never do business with you. But I enjoy playing golf with you. We'll go and play golf. The constant, like the context now of our relationship will be golf. <laughs> we will not be business partners and golf partners. We'll just be golf partners. Yeah. All right. And if that eventually fades with time, then it fades it's with fine. time. It's fine. Yeah. I think the biggest uh, re relationship this is relevant to, a type of relationship is enjoyable. <laughs> you know there has to be a lot of forgiving in Umcholo <laughs> yo please don't get me started on Umcholo that is yo Zooks don't get me started on Umcholo but you've got a point but don't get me started on Umcholo because that's a we'll whole, never finish there that's a whole different chat but yes you're right mm. but even in, in the context of family and family you know, family. You know the thing is family. it's family because mm. for us it's easy to forgive friends yes yeah 
That's why I'm saying we use friends lightly also. Yes. Because it's just the thing of they are far enough, like mm. distance wise, mm. right? Proximity. Yeah. One day we must talk about the cost of proximity. Yes. It's, it's expensive. Then, you understand what I'm saying? Here's the fancy English. <laughs> <laughs> we must talk about the cost of proximity. But with friends, it's kind of like distance. Like, because yeah. of the distance, you can do what you do. I'll forgive you. We can patch things up. Yeah. Family, we have this innate expectation mm-hmm. that because we are related and that's family in this context, you need to have my best interest at heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like we have that expectation mm-hmm. yeah. and it was never agreed to. Mm. Uh, yeah. If you think about it, <laughs> it was never <laughs> it was never agreed to. And oftentimes with family, we don't invest in nurturing our relationship. Mm-hmm. Like a relationship. Yeah. We are related, mm-hmm. but we lack relationship. Exactly. But we have the expectations of the fruit of relationship. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Mm, 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 yes. Then they tell you. Yes. Mm, mm. And they remind you that no man. That is true. Mm. There's no relationship here. That is true. We are related. Mm. And I think that's where we get it wrong. Yeah. I honestly that's where we get it wrong. Where we think because we are related by default, this is here's a list. You shall one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I shall do those things for you when we have relationship. That's why even the scripture says there's a friend that will stick closer than a brother. Mm. It acknowledges that there's a level of relationship that you can get to with a friend that you can never get to with your... And that's just because you don't nurture that relationship to that level. I think the highest level of relationship is friendship. Because there are things you will do for your friend because they're your friend. Mm. At that level of friendship, where you you realize you've invested so much in this, you guys get one another, that you'll never do for your family. And the difference is the nature of the relationship. How much have you poured into it? The fact that we share DNA is not enough. Yeah. You, you know what my my thoughts on, on this whole thing is? And it's it's quite a... It's a bit... I don't, I don't, I don't know if I should say controversial, or, but you let me know. Yeah. All right? You know how the Bible says, if someone slaps you, turn the <laughs> other cheek. And so like... Like... <laughs> According to human logic, that's no. Mm. I'm not gonna do that. If, I'm coming for you. If someone hurts me, it's either I'm gonna protect myself the next time, or I'm gonna punch back. You know. So, mm-hmm. but coming to relating this to the forgiveness thing, I think when Jesus said seventy times seven, I think he was just trying to say it's an unlimited number. Mm. You know, it's like don't even bother counting. Mm. Forgive them as many times until the day you die. And why? Because that's how God treats us. Mm. And as followers of Christ or God, we should always strive to be like God. Mm. So that means that, here's the controversial part. When someone hurts you, don't now create... More hate. Yeah, don't don't now say, okay, you're out. Mm. You know, no animosity. If they're your brother in Christ and you used to share your things with them, I guess, you know, continue. <laughs> continue sharing. And if you, forgive them again yeah. and again and again and again. But we'll never be like God. We are, I don't think we are capable of mm-hmm. doing that. But maybe, you know, that's something that we should strive towards. Just, just, a, mm. just a perspective. True. No, I get mm. you. I get you. It also says if your right hand makes you sin, cut it off. So if you if you're the person that's making me go, <laughs> bye. <laughs> yes, no, but yes. I get you. Hundred percent. That's that's another. No, hundred percent. I think the aim is always to nurture and live out the truth of our spiritual being and let that penetrate to the physical. Because mm-hmm. the physical, we get so many influences that are coming in. You yes. see, this this is fashionable today, then that's fashionable tomorrow. And I think all the things we see and like, you know, and are attracted to, yeah. all the beautiful things, the glitz, the glamour, the vibes, mm-hmm. I think they're just, we're attracted to them because they remind us of the true beauty that lives within us. Mm-hmm. So they just, they trigger that because we have that longing. So yeah. when we feed our spiritual self and our emotional and like psychological well-being and we're good, we're able to make that a lifestyle. Like forgiveness won't be something I have to, okay, it's that time again. That, yes, Let's roll out the yes, book. Yes. It becomes a, it becomes who you are. Who and you that are. striving, like you said, to be God is 
who you are. So we were just naturally a forgiving person. You need to be to get to that point. Some people are naturally mm-hmm. like for them that part of them is already you know well versed. It's already up there. Mm-hmm. For some of us, it needs some refining yeah. because mm-hmm. one mistake I'm coming. But you constantly work on that to a point where, where if you've refined, I think I've said this to you offline, when you've refined yourself to the point where you are one with God, like you've elevated to that yeah. level spiritually, yeah. there'll be no need for ritual. There'll be yes. no need for teachers. Yes. There'll be no need for the slaughtering. Yes. Because we do all of those as a means to mitigate the gap between yes. us Ooh. and him. Yeah. So the aim is to elevate to the point where we are one with him. Mm. Preach. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so that's what we are aiming towards. And that's, I think if we were all doing that as a people, where you were just elevating yourself to the point of high consciousness and high vibration, we wouldn't see half the bad things we see in this world. Because mm. most of the things we see in this world are us trying to prove that we are better than the next person. Mm. And whereas if you realize that you and them are joined, I think we did one episode that said life is holy and our destinies are joined. Yes. We have mutual destinies. Yes. That's a level of thinking and being that's above the average. Mm. Mm. right? And we're settling for average. Mm. At this point, we're settling for subpar. Yeah. <laughs> right? True. Um, True. Elevate. I think we have this tendency, and that's a human flaw, where when you see that this was the mark, your mark was 80, and you are just like, Yo, I'm at 60. I still have 20 to go. Now, nah, just bring back down the bar. <laughs> bring it to 60 mm. instead. We we'll lower the standard so that we feel accomplished. Mm. 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 And that's so true in so many areas mm. of society. Today. But the results will show. They are showing. <laughs> yeah. We are child. Yeah, we are right? When you are of a sound mind, you will realize that you don't lower the standard. You raise your level of being to the standard. That's what you strive towards. You that's elevate. Cool. That's gross. Businesses know that. Business will tell you, this year we made 100 rand. Next year we are making 110. That year 150. Let's keep it moving. Progressive. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's what we should. And at work will perform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm performing. I want to make sure. But when it comes to what counts, to the things we cannot replace, you can replace your job, whatever. But the things you cannot replace, you being you, yes. you showing up in relationship, that's where we get it wrong. Because we lower the standard instead of elevating our being and our consciousness. Sure. Are we good? Can we call it a day? <laughs> Can we wrap up? Last comments, ma'am? Last comments or questions or whatever what? you want. This is your oyster. This is your world. I'm here for you. <laughs> Saba well to have a naturally forgiving spirit. <laughs> Saba well, please give us tips on how to do that. Because sometimes Forgiveness for me, because of uh, the path and journey that I'm on, it's like, oh, I have to do it. <laughs> oh, I mm-hmm. like it's a, it's part of uh, being a disciple. It's part of the mantra. It's part of the what I have to do, to, mm-hmm. and to do it's this. not sincere. Even mm-hmm. when I say it to myself, I'm like, I, I forgive this person. That's what happened where <laughs> you backslide on the forgiveness. Um, so for me, that's that's what I sabah well to be naturally forgiving, yeah. and and not to fake it because sometimes like yes I am, and I was having a conversation with someone where sometimes I even forgot what you did, but the, the I mean, fact that <laughs> you made me feel somehow I remember the feeling that you gave me, and I'm holding on to the, to the point where I for I'm like can we really but I know that you did something to me and I'm holding on to you d- I wouldn't have this boundary if you didn't do something significant so now you met all over again just because you remember the feeling Saba well to have a naturally forgiving spirit please uh, give us tips facilitate the process well <laughs> am I the right person <laughs> first of all write, write their names on the paper write their names on the paper and burn it <laughs> ah, that doesn't work like I said it's an act of will so you'll forgive like it's a process like you know how you breathe in and then you breathe out like it's one of it's a process like there's a natural progression when you say 
yeah, I fake it. That means all you say is I forgive you. But yes. in your head, you're like, yeah, yes. given the chance. Yes. And also but, because sometimes that question. other person demands it. They're like, if you forgive me, if you forgive me, if you forgive me. It's kind of like... Oh, yeah. And then you're just like, no. I think... Um, and I'm sorry. It's also hard to forgive someone who doesn't show remorse. Yes. Yeah, I said so, remorse. Hey. <laughs> you see... I don't think it's hard to forgive someone that doesn't show remorse. I think it's hard to reconcile with someone that doesn't show remorse. Because forgiveness is me. Mm. Like, it's my choice. Or in this case, it's your choice. Mm. I'm letting go of that thing. Like, you're showing no remorse. So there's no... Pro- we can't get back to where we were. We can't come back to what we did. Because you clearly don't see a problem. <laughs> mm. So because you don't see a problem... We actually have a problem, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And yo, let's go here. That's kind of the issue with democracy, right? We forgive, but there was no remorse. So now we're on the same table. You yeah. never saw a problem. problem. Mm. And now I'm expecting you to act different. Yes. But you never saw a problem. I just forgave you. That's why, so that's why I said, you don't have to go back into a relationship with someone you've forgiven. Yeah. One day they can be like, oh, remorse. And they come back. At that point, it's just a conversation to clear the air. But it has no holding. Like, it's not something that you are holding on to anymore. It's just like, oh, okay, you came to your senses. Sharp. Congratulations. But, it, it, yeah, I've moved on. That's the thing. With Back to you and your fake forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> it, I don't have a, a trick up my sleeve. Like, if you do this, ah, shame, you'll forgive, like... Because it honestly depends on the depth of the hurt. Deep one, very deep. You know what I mean? Like, the easy things are like, mm. I I don't even flinch. We are over it. But some things are deep. Like, they have they cut and pierce through your, your heart. Absolutely. And those will take time to heal, first of all, because there's a wound that you need to nurture. Like, there's a wound you must attend to. And I think we should stop faking this thing of there's, no, there's a wound. You must attend yeah. to that wound, right? I'm letting go of you and the experience, but I'm still looking after myself. And the boundary is also a way of looking after myself. If you come back into my life a couple of days later, months, years, I'm assessing you. Already you must know that I'm a bit... Mm. Like you... Because even though we've pieced it together, like a broken plate, there's still cracks. Mm. So you will still need to show me that you are remorseful and you've reformed. And that's going to take time. I'm not going to just walk back in like nothing happened. Because we are no longer starting at zero. There's, there's been impact. You know, like when you have an injury, mm. like a knee injury and it heals, they always tell you, be careful. Because mm. because it was once broken, it can break it's again. Easier. It's easier the second time. Mm. Um, and when you find yourself in that space where you're like, yo, I'm getting mad again. Let it go again. Mm. Forgiveness is continuous. That's why I say, Forgiveness is continuous because injury is inevitable. You're going to get injured. You're going to get triggered. You're going to get bruised again in the same spot. Constantly let it go. Every, it must be like an exhale. Mm, it's been like breathing portion. Yeah, every time, like, every, every time exhale, let it go. Like, literally be telling them, I'm letting it go. I'm choosing to let it go. Because it's not that you're choosing to protect the other person. You're choosing to love and nurture yourself. So that you can be the person that you envision. Answered? Your last question, comment? Uh, I, think, I, think, I think I'm okay, man. But what, the, the, <laughs> last, the last thing that you mentioned though, um, really touched me. Um, Which one? Uh, the fact that we lower our standards mm. just so we can appease our that conscious part. or, or mm. whatever. Um, Maybe you can just wrap up with that. How can we... Um, <laughs> how can you elevate? How can we How can we elevate? How do you know when you are lowering your standard? Because a lot of things have... A lot of lowered standards now have become normal. Then, yes. Mm, normalized. It's hard to tell. Mm. Normalized. Mm. Yeah. So it's hard to tell that this thing is not... So, mm. Yeah, so how can we... You know, the truth is dysfunction can be normal mm. to you. Mm. 
Mm. Like if you live in dysfunction, that can be a normal because normal is a moving target. It rebases. Yes. It rebases. Exactly. Right. So if all you've ever known is dysfunction, Just and I really come into know. your world and I'm like, yo, yeah. what a mess. Mm. You're like, what mess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. you mean? Yeah. Because this is normal, right? Mm. But I c- rest assured, like you know, you can attest, you can tell me I'm wrong. Even when you're in the midst of a normalized inferiority, mm-hmm. you can feel it's out of place. Mm-hmm. Yes. Even if it's all you know. Yes. Yeah. Because the innate in you, it's like the being. inner being, your inner mm-hmm. being is complete. Your inner yeah. being is whole. Yeah. And it's that little voice that says, I, or that tingling feeling that says, Mm-mm, this is not the one. And you know it. Mm. But then you're like, I win. You, yeah. you shut it down real quick. You're like, no, this is cool this is where we all are yeah this is what we do yeah don't don't be weird now don't, don't try and stand up like yeah. sit down yeah. sit down right here <laughs> and that's what we do and you know we say the truth is the world has gone to dust basically not because of the bad people doing bad but because of the good people doing mm. nothing yeah. that's what we mean by lowering mm. our yeah. of the standard instead of elevating because all we do is like, I can't beat them, join them. That's what we do. Like, I can't beat them, join them. Everybody's doing it. My favorite line, everybody's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, so just because everyone is doing it doesn't make it right. Sure. The same way if no one is doing it, doesn't make it wrong. Yeah. Sure. Right? Yeah. Us doing something is not the measure of it being right or wrong. Mm. It stands as is. Right? And every day or every time as you evolve in life, Choose to do better. There are always avenues. And you know what it is. It's like when you have to go to gym at 6 o'clock and you're like, I can sleep for another 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know you could. Yeah. You should be. That's the thing. We know what we should do. Yeah. But we don't do it. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, talking is easy. Mm-hmm. Doing is difficult. Mm-hmm. But doing according to your speech is the hardest. Oh, yeah. Oh, so to do what you say is the oh, hardest. Hey. Almost impossible. <laughs> right? Man because of all those voices, all, all those memory, you know? Mm. Like, ish, if I now, I've always gone left. If today mm. I decide to go right, uh, what are the people going to say? Because mm. I've always been mm. left. But be equally vocal and be like, yo, folks, so I used to go left, right? That was me then. But I've discovered that the right is, makes more sense. So I'm going to go in that avenue and see what it has for me yes. and go forth and conquer tomorrow you might decide a different thing go on and conquer mm. but every day you know the mark you know the mark everybody knows the mark yeah. of this at my heightened when i'm at my best at my peak this is where i would be this is what i'd be doing this is how i'd show up mm. that's what you constantly have to aim towards and every decision you make there forth you need to ask yourself is it bringing me closer or taking me further away from my end goal. Sure. So basically, listen to your inner voice. Instinct. Listen to uh, yes. Get close to your God, because He will guide. You. Like this yeah. is my. Because my standard is not you, Zooks. It's not Portia. It's not yes. even me. Yes. You don't understand. And your standard shouldn't be me either. Yeah. I mean, I got standards and all. <laughs> <laughs> not cap. We all know they're quite high. But I should never be your standard, and I don't seek to be your standard. Yes. Right, yes. you need to have an internal compass of mm. this is my standard, yes. and anything that does not match my principle. You know, a constitution we have a constitution, mm. we don't really apply well sometimes, but we have a constitution. Mm. Everybody should have a personal constitution. Yeah. These are my rules, this is how I operate, yeah. and these are non negotiable, even for myself. Okay. And stick to that, okay. be principled people, yeah, okay. It clears it up. Thank you. Okay, guys, it's a wrap. That's how we close out this episode called The Burden of Memory. Don't let yesterday rob you from enjoying today and being impactful today and being better today so that tomorrow can get closer to what you envision. The world might be loud and messy, but like Zook said (laughs) and I said earlier, Don't lower the standard for instant gratification. Elevate your performance. Elevate your being to match the standard. 
And every day, give yourself grace. Take yourself seriously like you matter. Show up like you matter. Show up like you're the CEO of your life. And above all, love yourself unconditionally and respect all. Till next time, you know what to do. Take care of yourself. Take care of those around you and that which surrounds you. Bye for now. Cut! Cut. <laughs> <laughs>